I want to talk about some of the amazing things that you two are working on. Uh, Dina, why don't we start with you? You've been uh, working on setting up a Wi-Fi box that can read and monitor people's movements, their breathing, their heart rate, all kinds of things through walls. Um, how does it work and what do you do with it? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, basically it wouldn't be amazing if you have a smart Wi-Fi box that without having to wear sensors on your body, you can just use the surrounding wireless signal to measure your breathing, your heartbeat. So um, one of the ways that we started thinking about this is that there are all of these new advancements in machine learning. And if we can analyze the signal using these models, we can start getting information that is impossible traditionally, like being able to like see people and how they walk through walls, be able to just to monitor your breathing, your heartbeat, even in a different room. <laughs> it sounds creepy, but what's the medical application for something like that? So there are many medical applications. In fact, I mean, we all know that healthcare is a big problem today, and uh, one of the major issues is chronic diseases. So, and in chronic diseases, diseases, we know that many hospitalizations are avoidable if you can monitor people and react to the exacerbation early on. But there are no mechanism to monitor people and you just have to put all of these sensors on them today. It's something like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, congestive sleep apnea, heart apnea, disease, right. uh, Alzheimer, all of that stuff, uh, COPD, many diseases, depression even. Yeah. But you can monitor it without all of the, the tie-ups, without just, all the invasive yeah, ways. Yeah, you that... just live here, or the person lives their life naturally in their home, and just a wireless signal that is a smart Wi-Fi box. That sounds great. Um, yeah. Regina, let's talk a little bit about what you're working on. You've been uh, developing artificial intelligence, a computer program that can read uh, breast mammograms more accurately and more effic efficiently than the human eye can. Um, how does it work? So today when we are training radiologists, uh, they're trained by, to look at the image and analyze patterns that are predictive of current disease or future disease. And every radiologist in their lifetime maybe can see a few hundred thousands of mammograms. So what you can do with a machine, you can show to it millions of images with known outcomes and teach machine to make predictions. So you can start teaching the machine with what it is what humans are doing today, which is identifying cancer, but what is more exciting is to teach machines to do stuff that humans cannot do. For instance, predict who is going to get cancer within two years. It is well known that you know, cancer doesn't develop from yesterday to today, it takes time, and tissue changes. But for humans, it's very hard to analyze all these changes and predictively say this person is going to be sick in a few years. So what we are doing, we're teaching machines to look at all these mammograms that are collected in the hospitals where the outcomes are known so the machine can identify very subtle uh, changes and then predict the outcomes and what's exciting about it that our system is implemented at MGH at Massachusetts General Hospital and so far it helped human to read around 40,000 mammograms. You come at this from a personal perspective too. Um, you were diagnosed yourself in 2014 uh, but they didn't catch it in 2013 or 2012 when you went for mammograms. Absolutely. So after actually I started my research, I've discovered uh, uh, that my cancer was delaying diagnosis by two years, and it was uh, diagnosed actually quite small. But afterwards, looking at the literature, I realized that delayed diagnosis is a very common problem. And moreover, we don't really know today who is going to get the disease because only 15% uh, of the patients who have cancer in their families are becoming patients. So the vast majority of people don't know that they are at risk. So my thought was that we really can use technology and uh, help us to make these predictions that humans cannot do today.